Let's define limiting beliefs. Here we go. Living beliefs are negative thoughts that prevent you from taking action. They often manifest as rational excuses that justify inaction. So what's the impact? The impact is that limiting beliefs keep you comfortable, but hinder your growth and success. The last 30 days, we hosted our, our annual convention in Las Vegas, and we've been through many conferences and many follow-up meetings in between, and we're coaching people to get to the next level. We're masterminding, we're mentoring, we're helping people process their business. They run $10 million companies, $20 million companies, $30 million companies, and everybody's in between getting started. The $100,000 companies, $500,000 companies, $1 million companies. Everybody has a limiting belief at different levels of their growth. And oftentimes, these limiting beliefs get them all caught up. I'll give you an example. God told me not to do this. Or God told me that this isn't, I just felt that check in the spirit. Matt, people aren't buying Matt, people aren't picking up the phone. Matt, people just aren't getting back to me. Matt, in my city, in my state, people don't think this way. They don't act this way. People don't want to invest in their businesses or people want to invest in their families this way. Or worse, nobody in my family thinks I'm doing the right thing. Nobody in my family thinks I'm on the right path of financial freedom and prosperity that you told me, Matt, we could enjoy. Matt, you understand, I'm really not good at sales. I never really had to sell anything. I mean, I've done other things, but I'm just not really good at selling. Now... At face value, these reactions and these words sound very logical. And I would actually say, you know what? If God told you to do this or nobody's buying, you're in family things, and you're going opposite of the grain, they sound very logical for you to stop and not do it. Let me pause real quick and ask you who are watching this. What's some of the limiting beliefs that you've either gone through and passed through and blasted through? So what was I thinking about? That was nothing because I'm on the other side of that limiting belief. How many of you would agree that you've been through some limiting beliefs every stuff and you've accomplished it, you've busted down that wall, please put that one limiting belief or two limiting beliefs or three limiting beliefs that you've demolished and put in the comment section. We'd love to read them. Or the opposite. Is there a limiting belief that you can't seem to process through and get over right now? Please, if you care and bold enough and courageous enough to share, please put it in the comment section below too as well. So why do limiting beliefs even show up to begin with? Well, Matt, you know, I, I got this brain, this mind, this vision. I, I see it, I feel it, but I just don't do anything about it. Well, welcome to the, no, 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 not the twilight zone. Welcome to the comfort zone. Let me explain what a comfort zone is. The brain is wired to avoid discomfort, staying in the comfort zone. And one of my favorite books, the big book, the Bible, says in Matthew 26, that the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And here's why. Big goals trigger fear. Big goals trigger uncertainty. Big goals trigger inadequacy. Big goals trigger lack of bandwidth and incapacity. And when you're doing this mental self-assessment of this big goal, like, I don't know, the people that I have to accomplish this big goal aren't here yet, or the financial resource for me to accomplish this big goal, I don't have not acquired it yet, or the sales I need to build my company I haven't made yet. Man, let me just reduce these beliefs and goals and let me limit my expectations of my life. Well, welcome to growing. Welcome to evolving. Back in the same big book called the Bible, even in Hebrews, it says, let's go on and press on to spiritual maturity. By the way, how easy is it to physically mature? You ain't got to do nothing to physically mature, do you? You just grow up. You, your face changes, your body changes, you start having hair growth in places never thought that you'd grow up, right? You mature, and you mature as an adolescent into an adult. But from an entrepreneurial standpoint, there's also an area of emotional, spiritual, mental maturity to accomplish the bigger, bigger goals that we set for ourselves. So therefore, the people around us, the people that we employ, our customers, our vendors, the people that we engage in business are blessed. People that we work with are enriched because of our obedience to our blessings, our goals, our gifts, and also execution of the game plan to get us to accomplish those bigger goals. So let me share with you two zones. There's a comfort zone and there's a growth zone. Everything you want in life is not in the comfort zone. Everything that you want to accomplish in life is in the growth zone. In other words, you have to get out of your comfort zone into the growth zone to experience the things that you've been praying and hoping and believing in. In this process, on this bridge, going from the comfort zone to the growth zone, this bridge is going through an abyss. And through this abyss, you'll experience fear. you experience loneliness. You will experience potential regret. Am I doing the right thing? you are experiencing potentially the point of no return or the point I get to get back. Whichever you choose at that moment will define you. You'll say things like, I don't have the right education. I don't have any experience. 
I don't have the right skill set. I don't have the money. These are all protective measurements that we take going through this abyss. But it's not the truth. So what about the classic example of I'm too busy. I ain't got the time for this. I got so much on my plate. This is a classic example of you slipping into the limiting belief zone and actually making it rational. And it seems logical, right? There's only so many hours in a day. I, I can't add another thing to my plate. But uh, hey, fellas, let me talk to you real quick. <laughs> Remember the time when you were dating your girl? Before you dating your wife? And she called you at midnight, one o'clock? Babe, I'm lonely. Can't come by and keep me company? What'd you do, bro? What'd you do? Say, I'm too, I'm too sleepy. I'm not coming. Bro, you know you got right out of them pajamas, right into your flip-flops, and you hightailed over there. You got there. Speed record time. In other words, in other words, you make time for things that you value. You make time for things that you know will be either pleasing or helping you avoid pain. But when we find ourselves in this rational mode, this comfort zone mode, we're gonna go into it. And probably many of you, you know, you, those are funny experiences when we were dating. Now, many of you are married to that woman and you make time for her, you make time for your kids, you make time for your business, you always make time for things that you value. See, that's what the maturity, that's pressing onto maturity, going through that abyss of going from the comfort zone into the growth zone. You say, you know what? If it's for the betterment of my family, I will do this. And nothing is going to stop me from improving the quality of life for my employees, my staff, my family, the people I love and care about, and anybody that's around me, I will do this because it's my responsibility with God-given talents to do something about it. It wasn't placed on my lap. This divine appointment didn't end up in my door because it was just a mistake. Is my God, don't make mistakes. I don't know if you believe that. By the way, do you believe that? God, don't make mistakes. Put that in the comment section below.